Hello. Today's book is called Dory and the Play by author Patricia Coombs. This is Dory. She is a witch. A little witch. Her hat is always on crooked and her socks don't match. And wherever Dory goes, her black cat kink goes with her. One Thursday, the day of the fancy dress ball, Dory swept her room. She found a pair of socks that matched and hung them on her chair. Dory skipped down the hall to her mother's room and Gink went with her. The big witch was lying on the bed with a towel over her head. Mother, said Dory, I've come to sweep the room for you. Oh, the big witch opened one eye. No thank you, said the big witch. I have a headache and I need to take a nap. Why don't you take a nap too? Dory skipped downstairs and Gink went with her. Dory went into the kitchen. Cook was there stirring butter in a big bowl with one hand and taking muffins out of the oven with the other. Cook, said Dory, I've come to sweep the kitchen for you. No thank you, said Cook, frowning and muttering and stirring faster and faster. I'm much too busy to be helped. Go and take a nap. Dory went into, out into the hall and Gink went with her. I don't want to take a nap, said Dory. Wherever Cook and Mother are tired, I have to take a nap. Dory tiptoed down the hall and she peeped into the parlour. Gink, said Dory, let's put on a play. You'll be the wicked magician. You'll also be the prince and I'll be the princess. Dory put the broom across the top of the two chairs. There, said Dory, that'll be the stage. Hmm, now we need some curtains. Dory skipped down the hall and into the sewing room. It was a mess. There were piles of clothes and cloths needed to be mended and patterns and buttons and spools of thread and pins and needles everywhere. Dory picked up some cloth. Hmm. This would make very nice curtains, said Dory. Dory took the cloth and a pair of scissors and went out into the kitchen. Cook was muttering and banging pots and pans around. Hmm. Cook, said Dory. Oh my goodness, I thought you were taking a nap, said Cook crossly. What is it now? I'm making a surprise for you and mother. I wanted to know, would you cut this piece of old cloth up for me? Right across here. Oh, all right, grumbled Cook. Give it to me, but then you run along and stay out of the kitchen. Cook cut the cloth. Oh, thank you, Cook, said Dory. I won't bother you any more. Dory went back into the sewing room and filled her pockets 
with pins and skipped back into the parlour. Gink went with her. Dory pinned the cloth across the handle of the broom. Gink stuck his head out between the curtains and looked at Dory. Come on, Gink, said Dory. Now I will dress you up as a magician. You will be Gink the Great. Dory skipped back down the hall to the sewing room and Gink went with her. Dory found a piece of cloth and pinned it around Gink for a cloak. She found one of her mittens in the mending basket and tried it on Gink. It just fit and it made a fine hat for a magician. Dory found another piece of cloth that was just right for a princess. Dory pinned it around herself and looked in the mirror. Hmm, I need a crown, said Dory. She skipped down the hall and into the kitchen. Gink went with her. Cook, said Dory. I need something else. My goodness, said Cook. What is it now? Ah, uh, you know that round tin with the hole in it? Can I try it on, please? Oh, all right, grumbled Cook. Dory opened the cupboard and she tried on the cake tin. It was much too small, so she tried on the flan ring. It was just right. Dory ran upstairs and got a box of gold stars from under her bed. She stuck them all around the crown. Come on, Gink, said Dory. We've got to hurry before Mother gets ready for the fancy dress ball. And she won't have time to see the play if we don't come go quick. Dory took the crown and the pieces of cloth and put them in the parlour behind the curtains. She skipped into the dining room and got the dinner bell. She peeped into the kitchen. Cook was busy taking things out of the oven. So Dory tiptoed over to the refrigerator and opened the door very quietly. What are you doing in the refrigerator? roared Cook. You'll spoil your appetite. I'm not doing anything in the refrigerator, said Dory. I just need a little something for a surprise. I'm not going to eat it. Hmm. Dory slipped a tin of sardines into her pocket and closed the refrigerator. Cook, said Dory, my surprise for you, mother, is almost ready. When I ring the dinner bell, come into the parlour and sit down. I've been working really hard and you've just got to come. <sighs> well, all right, I'll come, said Cook. Dory went back upstairs and Gink went with her. She peeped into her mother's room. The big witch was sitting on her bed, frowning. Mother, said Dory, do you still have a headache? Oh, the big witch looked gloomy at Dory. Miss Dorp is my headache. She's always winning the prize for best costume at the ball. It makes my headache when I think about it. Oh. Oh, said Dory. Well, I have been making a surprise for you and it will cheer you up. I've invited Cook too. And when I ring the bell, will you come to the parlour? Oh, all right, she answered. The 
Dory ran back down the stairs and into the parlour, and Gink went with her. Dory pinned her robes around herself and put on her crown. Then she dressed Gink up in his cloak and hat. Dory reached into her pocket and got something and put it in the middle of the stage. It was a sardine. Gink ate it. He wanted more and he looked up at Dory. But Dory shook her head. You'll have more sardines after a while, Gink. They'll keep you on the stage doing what you're supposed to do. Dory rang the dinner bell and peeped through the curtains as soon as the big witch and cook sat down. Dory pulled the curtains back open and stood in the middle of the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, said Dory, this play is called The Princess and the Magician. I am the princess and Gink is the magician. Gink the Great. The princess is walking in the royal gardens. She is picking flowers and Gink the Great is following her. But the princess doesn't know that. The poor princess does not know that Gink the Great is about to put on a wicked spell over her. Dory walked back and forth and leaned down every few steps, pretending to pick flowers from the carpet. She had to be careful that her crown did not fall down. Gink could smell the sardines in Dory's pocket and Gink followed Dory back and forth and back and forth. Gink stepped on his magician's cloak and stumbled. He got all tangled up. Dory stopped, picking up flowers. Gink the Great has just cast a wicked spell over the poor princess, said Dory. It was such a bad spell. He got tangled up in his cloak. Dory reached under her robes and got another sardine out of her pocket. Gink got untangled and stood up on his hind legs, waiting for the sardine. Gink the Great is looking to see if his wicked spell is going to work, explained Dory. Now he's going to run away so no one will know he did it. And Dory tossed the sardine behind the curtains and Gink ran straight after. This is the end of Act 1, said Dory. Dory closed the curtains and she took the cloak and mink off Gink. Dory tucked a sardine into the rim of her crown. She opened the curtains again, closed her eyes and stretched out on the carpet. Dory opened one eye. A hundred years have passed and a handsome prince, Prince Gink, is galloping through the forest to save the princess. He'll be here in a minute. Gink came out from behind the curtains. He sniffed and sniffed and came closer and closer to Dory. He sniffed Dory's hand. Then he sniffed all the way up to her crown. He knocked the crown off and ate the sardine. Dory stood up and she made a curtsy. Thank you, thank you, Prince Gink. You've saved me from the spell of the wicked magician. Now we can live happily ever after.
said Dory and went back behind the curtains. Oh, well done, well done, clapped big, the big witch and cook. The big witch was smiling. That was a beautiful play, Dory, said the big witch. I feel much better now. How did you get Gink to go back and forth like that? asked Cook. Dory looked up at the Cook and smiled. Sardines, said Dory. That was a secret in the refrigerator. Pa, said Cook. Maybe you have better have your bath before your supper. Dory went and took her bath and Gink sat on the windowsill, licked his paws and washed his face. Dory then went and put on a clean dress and went back downstairs into the kitchen with Gink. Dory was just finishing her supper and Cook was washing the dishes when the kitchen door was flung open. It was the big witch. Cook dropped the kettle. Oh my, said Dory in a small voice. What happened to my costume, said the big witch. Look at it, just look. Oh my, said Dory. Oh no. Oh, why didn't I look at the cloth before I cook it, cut it, said Cook. I'm sorry, mother, said Dory. It just looked like a funny old dress. The big witch, Cook and Dory thought and thought and thought about what to do. Dory looked up at her mother. Mother, said Dory, you could go to the French fancy ball, fancy dress ball as a little witch. Oh, the big witch looked at Dory. That's it. Cook looked at Dory then. Of course. Cook took the stuff, a stuffing out of the big witch's hat so it could fall over sideways like Dory's hat. And Dory brought the big witch a pair of socks that didn't match and a nightgown too. Oh, the doorbell rang. Thank you, said the big witch. Oh, thank you. I'm almost ready, said the big witch. Tell everybody I'll be right there. Dory opened the door. Oh my, you all look wonderful, said Dory. Mother will be long in a minute. Mr. Orbs was dressed as a pincushion. Squig was dressed as an umbrella. Dinger was dressed as an ice cream cone. Miss Dorp was dressed as a queen. Why, I thought you were going to dress as a queen too, cried Miss Warp, Dorp. I changed my mind. It changed by mistake, but I like this better, said the big witch. Well, it's the best costume I've ever seen, said Mr. Orps. I like elves. I like elves better than could pincushions, said Squig. I like elves better than umbrellas, said Dinger. Well, I like queens with lots of ruffles and beads and lace, said Miss Dorp crossly. And with that, they all said goodnight. Goodbye, Dory. Goodbye, Cook. And they went off to the ball. Dory waved from them from, at them to them at the doorway. Well, said Cook, your play had a happy ending, after all, even if people can't tell the difference between a little witch and an elf.
I suppose it's hard to tell sometimes, said Dory. And I'm sorry I bothered you when you were so busy. Cook just smiled. I'm always busy. Sometimes I'm so busy being busy. And now it's time for you to go to bed. Dory climbed all the way up the stairs and Gink went with her. In a few minutes, she was sound asleep under the covers. Gink curled up on her socks on the floor beside the bed. The clock in the hall struck midnight. The big witch tiptoed up the hall stairs. Shh. She went into Dory's room. The big witch was smiling, looking at Dory. Oh, mother, Dory said and sat up. Did you win? Oh, mm, Mr. Orbs and I both won. All Mr. Orbs' pins fell out and he won first. The clock strikes twelve. Shh, said the big witch, walking up the stairs. She goes into Dory's room. The big witch is smiling. She sat looking at Dory. Oh, mother, said Dory, sitting up. Did you win? <laughs> Mr. Orbs and I both won. Mm. All Mr. Orbs' pins fell out and he won first as a tomato. And I won first prize as an elf. <laughs> oh, I'm glad, said Dory. Me too, said the big witch. Dory fell asleep with a big smile on her face. The big witch fell asleep with a big smile on her face too. And so did Mr. Orbs. All of them had huge smiles on their faces for the whole night. <laughs>